The Indiana Hoosiers met with Bradley transfer Connor Hickman. Can they bring the hometown kid back to Bloomington? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Locked on Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. We are a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Shout out to all the everydayers, those of you that are coming back each and every day, whether you're on any of your audio platforms or on the video version on YouTube. Thank you so much for making this your go-to spot for all things Indiana Athletics. Be sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. We continue to grow. You guys are killing it there, so be sure you do that and help us out on YouTube. Indiana and the coaching staff meet with Bradley transfer Connor Hickman, and the question now becomes, can we bring him home? Can he come back to Bloomington and play for the Hoosiers for one year that he has left of his eligibility. We'll talk about that today. Plus, we'll talk about the McDonald's All-American game that happened last night and a quarterback update from head coach Kurt Signetti on the football side of things. That's what's here on the show today. Connor Hickman meets and visits with Indiana. He is a Bloomington native. He literally played at Bloomington High School South with Anthony Leal. So, yeah, he's from right around here. And he's played at Bradley for quite some time, and he's got uh, just a heck of a track record. When you start looking at some of his stats, he was 14.5 point scorer this year, 3.5 rebounds, 3 assists, a steal, and did average a turnover or two. Um, but when you start comparing his numbers as he has gone through his career, they've only gotten better. And yeah, a 14 points per game score, a guy that can also shoot threes, we'll talk about in a second, that's somebody Indiana could use. That's somebody that we could use on the roster right now. And he's six foot three. He's the guard that has just the one year left. And he brings in that experience, I think, is what we would have to highlight here is you put him in the rotation with Trey Galloway. I think they play a very similar style of basketball. Um, I think that. Um, Connor Hickman is a much better shooter than Trey Galloway, at least the Galloway from this past year. The Galloway of old, yeah, they may have a good little shootout. They can have a three-point contest, but Galloway of last year can't hang with Connor Hickman because this guy was shooting 40% this year from behind the arc. He was attempting almost six threes a game and was shooting 40%. That's pretty good. That's exactly what we're looking for in Bloomington, because as we've said numerous times, we have one three-point shooter, and it's McKenzie and Baco. We have to go find more shooters. And the one-year, look, the eligibility conversation doesn't really bother me at this point because we just need bodies. We need bodies to fill this roster and bodies that are going to be able to compete day in and day out, and most importantly, compete in the Big Ten. So, I don't care if you have five years or if you have one or half a year. I don't care what the case is. Come on in and we'll bring you home. And that's what Indiana's trying to do with Connor Hickman. And, you know, people have been, uh, I was kind of reading some things last night about how he could come in and help spread the floor and, and be that extra threat behind the arc. And that's absolutely right. But I think his defense is very underrated. I really do. I think his defense is underrated somewhere or uh, I should say a place that we struggled this past year when it came to stopping other guards, right? Stopping other opposing guards from just having the day of their life, the night of their life against us shooting the basketball and scoring at will. We need guys that can step up and play and defend multiple guys. I mean, Xavier Johnson was a liability and so many, I mean, when you got Trey Galloway, who was battling some injuries too, I mean, he was okay. He was your best defending guard, sure, but you just didn't have a whole lot. Gabe Cups, liability. Anthony Leal, eh, okay, sometimes, but he obviously didn't play all that much. So you see what I'm saying here. Offensively, yeah, we definitely need some help on that end, and that's going to be with anybody that we bring in. 
But I think that Connor Hickman's defense is good enough. I'm not saying it's elite. I'm not saying it's the best thing you're ever going to see. But I do think it's enough to make an impact. And I think it's enough to make us better as a team on that end of the floor. Because, man, I'm tired of guards coming in against Indiana this past year and lighting it up from three, getting to the rack, blowing by our defenders. I mean, it's and then getting our bigs in foul trouble. That's what that leads to. That's how that happens. When the guard gets blown by and you're leaving Malik Renu there to defend him on his own, and most of the time he's going to foul him just to try to bail himself out. So I'm tired of that. And I think Connor Hickman can bring that defensive effort and defensive skill set to Bloomington. As far as I know, everything went well. Um, we'll see if if this is a place that he wants to be. I mean, it would literally be him coming back to his hometown of Bloomington to finish off his career. And I think that'd be a pretty cool story. A guy that's played five years elsewhere and has a chance to wrap up his college career at his hometown school at one of the best programs in the sport. I think that's a really neat thing, and I'm sure that he is talking with his family and trying to figure out the best thing for him. But, man, you bring this guy in, you fill another roster spot, you have another shooter, thank God, and ultimately you're just bringing in the experience. And when you watch this guy, he is very quick off the shot, like off the bounce and with his shot. He shoots it, bam, it's gone. Like he catches it. If he's going to rise and fire, you're not going to have a chance. He doesn't need any airspace, which is really unbelievable. I was watching some of his highlights, and he would come off a screen or he'd be sitting in the corner, and as soon as he catches it, man, he's going up for it, and it doesn't take long for it to leave his fingertips and go to the bottom of the net. So I think he is a unique skill set because so many players have that slow, you know, slow wind up and then release when it comes to the threes. Not this guy. He doesn't need airspace. He doesn't need much time, and he's going to let it fly. And something he was doing near the end of the season, which I think we need as the guards that are here in Indiana, is he was getting to the rack, too. He was putting it on the floor and actually getting to the rim, laying it in, getting dunks, getting fouled, moving the defense around and able to kick out and make plays happen, right? When you work from the inside out, good things happen, especially in the offense that we run with Mike Woodson here in Indiana. So all in all, I think Connor Hickman fits this team perfectly. I think he is a perfect addition if that's what happens here for this Indiana squad. And I hope it happens. I think it'd be a lot of fun. He seems like a good kid. Seems like a good dude. Wants to be here, I think. And look, we need him desperately. We need him. So let's see if Mike Woodson and the staff can go out and lock it down. They've had the visit. We'll see if he decides to show up and come to Indiana and use his last year of eligibility here in Bloomington. Connor Hickman, the Bradley transfer, visited with Indiana, and I'm feeling pretty good, and we'll see if Mike Woodson can pull it off. Coming up on Locked on Hoosiers, we'll take a look at the McDonald's All-American game from last night. Indiana commit Bryson Tucker played. Lots of uh, familiar names in that game last night as well. We'll talk about that and what happened and really what it means when we come back here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Look, Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball and kind of the opening couple of weeks of baseball or the Final Four coming up this weekend, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out the Fire TV channels, I'm just telling you, you should. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash TV. 
Welcome back into Locked On Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day, and thank you for making it so. Last night was the McDonald's All-American game, and look, here's what I'll say first is I normally don't watch this very much. Um, it's normally not the <laughs> it's normally not the most exciting or actually best quality basketball, but it was pretty good last night. I have to admit, it was pretty good last night in this game. I mean, you're talking about obviously the the best of the best, the biggest of the big names in high school basketball, and it was the East who got the win 88 to 86, a two point game. Man, it was competitive from the opening tip. And it was really exciting, a lot of fun. I believe it or not, I watched the entire thing. And I never do that with this because it's always just a, a track meet, basically, where basically they're just in an open gym and they just see we're just going to shoot it and show off and see if we can make ourselves look better. But man, this was a legit game and it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. And some of the highlights, Derek Queen uh, had 23 points. And of course, the Maryland commit that we were <laughs> we were after pretty hard and, and kind of have a, a sour taste in our mouth about him. And look, I saw a bunch of you Indiana fans were like, I'm cheering against this guy. And I got Maryland folks in my family. I'm cheering against Derek Queen. Look, that's your <laughs> that's your choice if you want to. Um, I know that look, he's not the only one on that list that's kind of uh that's kind of given us a, a bad taste, right? You've got Cooper Flagg in there, Derek Queen in there, um, Boogie Fland in there, Liam McNeely. Well, oh, shoot, we know that one. And look, for you Hoosiers fans that want to be on that, maybe on the little bit more pettier side, that's okay. I'm not judging. I promise I'm not judging. Liam McNeely. 0 for 6 from the floor, 0 for 3 from 3, and 2 for 2 from the free throw line and had just two points. So, you know, there you go. If you want to have something to look at, want to make yourself feel a little bit better, McNeely didn't have the best game, the best showing in the McDonald's All-American game. But him and Bryson Tucker were on the same team, and I think that's kind of interesting. I wonder if uh, one of any uh, conversations were had between those two young men but Tucker in 12 minutes played last night was just one of three from the floor, and it was a three-pointer that he made for just those three points. Also had a foul uh, and had a turnover. So didn't do a whole lot with Bryce and Tucker, but again, it was really the it was the Derek Queen show um, on the other side, and then it was uh, Ian Jackson and also uh, with Derek Queen on our team, and, and then you had Boogie Fland who went off for 17. So when you got those three guys that start and play most of the minutes, that's typically what's going to happen in these games. I'll say this, though. Don't buy into the stats from the All-American game. Like, this is not supposed to be a live-and-die stat sheet. With Derek Queen at 23, Dylan Harper at 22, Trey Johnson at 17, and Boogie Fland at 17. Like, don't. Don't buy into that. It's not, it's not do or die. It's not the end of the world that that Bryson Tucker didn't have a huge game. Even Liam McNeely. I know we have again, there's a there's a sour taste there, but he's a better player than that, right? And on the other side, uh, you've got Flory Badunga on there, Dylan Harper, Trey Johnson, Carter Knox. Um, I mean, just it's so many big time players. It's the best players in 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 high school basketball that were competing in this game last night. And Again, I was actually surprised on how good and how high quality the game itself was. But let's remind ourselves here that while we have missed on quite a few of those, we still had a guy represented in the McDonald's All-American game. Yes, it should be more. Let's just be real. It should be more. But we at least have the one, thank God. And he's going to be a really good player is Bryson Tucker. And while he didn't have much action last night, I was – I liked what I saw. I think he's going to be a shooter, and I think his defense is really good. And he brings in that excitement. He brings in the opportunity that Indiana could be a really good team next year. You start bringing in more portal guys. You bring in Bryson Tucker. I wish we had more. Imagine if you had, well, you probably wouldn't have these two guys at the same time, Bryson Tucker and Liam McNeely, but you see what I'm saying here. Imagine if you were bringing in multiple of these guys that we were in on and we were shooting for. I look at Derek Queen again. Yeah, it hurts. It's disappointing to watch him go out and light it up. And guess what? He's probably going to do that at Maryland. And he's probably going to do it against us when we play him. But you just got to move on from that. We had a guy playing 
in this game last night who I know it was late, but he's given us a chance. And the Hoosiers have to find a way to make that worth it, make it worth his time to come here, right? We talked about this the other day when he committed. Development is going to be key. It's going to be crucial. Yeah, you could talk about the NIL and NBA stuff, and that kind of goes into the, to the development thing, but make it worth his time. Make sure this decision is the right one for him because we don't want this to be a one and done where he transfers out, which is not really a term people are using, but I think you probably could. You don't want him leaving and going somewhere else. And if he decides to go pro, that's on him, but at least give him the chance to do that, right? Show other recruits that you can get to the league by coming to Bloomington. And we've done that with a couple of them already. I'm saying we just got to continue that trend. And if we do that, good things are going to happen. And Bryson Tucker will make this team better. I promise you that. He will make this team better. How early will that be? I don't know. Is it going to be a McKenzie and Baco situation where it takes three or four months? Or does he come in and just light it up and compete to be one of the best freshmen in college basketball? We're going to find out. And I think that's the exciting part of it. That's the thrill of bringing in high-level freshmen. You just don't know. And they're a piece of clay that you can just kind of mold how you want them to. And we'll see what happens with Bryson Tucker coming in to Indiana, but he played in the McDonald's All-American game last night, had a bucket, looked all right, didn't play a whole lot, and again, don't don't buy into what happens in these games. I mean, even the, the scouts don't look into these a whole lot because it's normally not as competitive as it was, but shout out to those guys for making it actually fun to watch this game last night in the McDonald's All-American game. Well, coming up on Locked on Hoosiers, we're going to flip gears onto the football side of things. Head coach Kurt Signetti gives a little bit of an update on the quarterback position and the quarterback battle as we're about halfway through the spring. We'll talk about that in just a second on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded right now. You've got baseball going on. You've got the college and pro. You've got the NBA and the NHL coming down to the wire. They've got the postseason starting in less than two weeks. I know it is insane. And FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet the, on the Final Four, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Again, $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. That's FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N to make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Final segment on Locked on Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and if you are on the audio version, hit the notification, the little bell-looking thing, so you never miss a new episode. Indiana gives a, and a head coach, Kurt Signetti, on the football side, give an update on the quarterback battle because it is a true battle and a position that, man, we've been hurting for for a long time, and we just need a good guy in there. We need somebody that can manage the game, make the throws, and let's be real, win some games. And that's what's trying to be solved right now in the spring for Indiana football is who is going to be that quarterback this fall for, for the Hoosiers. And there are some guys in there right now that, look, there's just not a whole lot known about what they're going to do here but you have a guy in there that's got a ton of experience. And Kurt Signetti likes what he sees so far from the Ohio transfer quarterback, Curtis Rourke. He gave him, look, he said, I'm not going to give up too much. And here's what Kurt Signetti said. He said, I'm not going to tell you about the quarterback rotation. He says, from here on out, I may not really be very open about it. Although I am impressed with Rourke's progress. Let's just say that. So, the sixth-year senior who played five years at Ohio, Offensive Player of the Year, coming in and just looking for a shot, looking for a chance. Indiana gave it to him. Kurt Signetti gave it to him and says, all right, here you go. There's no doubt that this is Curtis Rourke's job. It, I mean, it, it's 1,000% his job to, I think, win and possibly lose. And what I mean by that is this is his to win, like, 
he's he's got it, but I think he has to go out and earn it. I don't think they're just going to hand it to him because he has five years of college football experience. I don't think that's the case. I think he has to go out and take it and win it. But what I also mean is it's his to lose, where, yeah, he's in the lead. If he does the things he's supposed to do in Curtis work, he's probably going to be your starting quarterback. And for Kurt Signetti to say, yeah, I'm not going to give you any updates about the rotation, but if I have to talk about somebody, it's going to be Curtis work and his development and how he's gotten better. That's a good sign. That's a really good sign. And whether that's in comparison to the other guys in the room or just Curtis work in general, if he's just showing off that showing off that much, that's great. That's fantastic news either way. And, you know, not only are you, are you dealing with Curtis work in there, but you have Tyler Cherry also, who is the four-star freshman coming in, who is just going to try and light it up and just try to see if he can win the job this spring where he's coming in six foot five, 215, hopefully be- beefing that up just a hair. And look, I think he is going to come in. And look, he's already coming in as one of the highest rated quarterbacks in 2024, one of the most attractive quarterbacks for all these different programs coming in. And so you have a, a unique situation here for Indiana, I should say. It's not normally unique. This is what you want it to look like, but this is what Indiana needed. You bring in an experienced guy who's played a lot of college football, looking for a big shot, looking for a big chance, who you assume is going to be your starter. And then you've got your young guy back behind him, your young gunslinger, who is just coming in to look and light it up, get better. If he wins the job, great. If not, he's there to back it up, and he's there for the future of the program. That's exactly where you want to be if you're head coach Kurt Signetti in Indiana football. Now, with the spring, you are not going to have a winner named. It's going, it's that's just not how this works anymore. Coaches don't name starting quarterbacks in April. It it doesn't do you any good. That's the problem, is it doesn't do you any good because then you go all summer long and one guy's probably not working as hard who was named the starter because oh, I'm the starter. I don't really have to work as hard anymore. And then there's a good chance that. Everybody else in the room is like, well, I'm not the starter. I'm not going to the gym today. I'm not the starter. I don't have to do anything. Not my problem. I'm not going to watch film. I'm not going to talk to coaches. Whatever. I'm I'm done, right? All of those things kick in. So you go into the fall with an open battle, with an open mind, and everybody comes in and competes. If it's, I mean, it's not hard to make a prediction right now. Um, I think that Rourke is your guy. You don't. I always say this, you don't bring in a guy like Curtis Rourke who played five years of college football, has got just the one year left. You don't bring him in if you don't plan on him being the guy. And on the flip side, he doesn't come in if he doesn't plan on being the guy. I don't think they're going to hand it to him. He's going to have to win it, but I have some confidence that he will win it. But I think people are excited about Cherry as well and what he could bring to to this rotation. And don't forget about the redshirt sophomore, Taven Jackson, too, who is in there. So you do have a three-man race for this quarterback spot, and I think all three will be a part of it. I think it does come down to uh, to Rourke and Cherry. And I think that's going to be your, your pecking order, Rourke, Cherry, Jackson. I just think that's what it's going to be. And you all got to stay ready. What happens if Rourke sucks? What happens if he gets hurt? What happens if something else goes wrong, right? You have to be prepared and ready to go. And that's where you look at Kurt Signetti and you look at this entire coaching staff and you say, okay, we have to make sure they're all ready. We got to develop and learn and and teach and train and make sure these guys are ready. And that's not just in the quarterback room. That's all over the place. And really reset the standard of Indiana football. If you can do that, Indiana is going to be in a good spot. But that's the latest update on the quarterback battle about halfway through spring for Indiana football. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. I appreciate you being here. Be sure you like the video, okay? It helps us get it out. Send it to all your family, all your friends. Let them know where they need to be each and every day. Subscribe to the channel. It's free. It's easy. Helps us grow tremendously. Continue to comment down below. I'm going to be active there as well. If you're on audio, subscribe there. Turn on notifications. And hey, we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, Hoosier fans, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.